Headlines for this week include a UWL professor writes an award-winning book. A dating doctor comes to town to offer students some love advice. And find out when the last day to drop a class is. Stay tuned, WMCM's Week in Review is next. Thanks for watching WMCM's Week in Review. I am Haley Seitz. And I'm Travis Udell. UWL's Matt Cashin received the Catherine Ann Porter Prize in Fiction. Cashin received the award for his latest book nearly a year ago, and he will officially launch the book Thursday, November 5th. A committee and judge selected Cashin's work based on merit for more than 250 submissions. The book is titled The Last Words of the Holy Ghost and is a collection of 12 stories featuring a cast of quirky characters with diverse points of views. Set in Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina, and Wisconsin, the stories are about people struggling to survive the highs and lows of daily life while negotiating conflicts related to class, gender, race, sexuality, family, and storytelling itself. If you would like to meet or talk with Cash, and he will be on hand at the Root Note next Thursday, November 5th, from 7 until 7.45 in the evening. Cashin will give a brief reading and also sign a few copies of the award-winning short story collection. Next Monday, the dating doctor is coming to UWL. His name is David Coleman, and he has been honored 14 times as National Speaker of the Year for his message and humor on dating. Coleman is the author of multiple books that are popular worldwide, including Making Relationships Matter, Date Smart, and 101 Great Dates. His speech will help you discover if someone is worth pursuing, how to find a partner who compliments you, how to survive a bad breakup, how to become a more passionate and safer lover, and how to identify if you share the three types of love necessary for a healthy and successful romance. He says that reporting online to be in a relationship is a far cry from actually being in one, and David will help you navigate those tough dating waters. David will be speaking at 7 in the evening on Monday, November 2nd in Valhalla. Admission is free and open to the public. UWL Music Department will host the 2015 Lacrosse New Music Festival Tuesday, November 3rd through Thursday, November 5th. Concerts will be Tuesday and Thursday evenings in the Annette Recital Hall, which is located in the Center for the Arts Building. All concerts begin at 7.30 p.m. and are free and open to the public. This year's festival showcases the talents of world-renowned cellist Craig Holtgreen. Holtgreen specializes in performance of contemporary music for solo cello and cello with electronics. Other ensembles include performance including the Lacrosse's Chamber Choir, UWL Concert Choir, UWL Women's for Chorus. For more information about the festival, go to uwlax.edu backslash music. Along with the music department, this event is sponsored by the College of Liberal Studies, the School of Arts and Communication, and the Wisconsin Alliance for Composers. Studying abroad is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for college students everywhere, but it comes with a lot of questions. We sent out our WMCM crew to find out what studying abroad can do for you. Abroad 101 gives students the chance to learn about the different study abroad programs, application procedures, scholarships, and much more. This was the fourth installment of the Abroad 101 series. This series has a multitude of benefits to offer students by giving them a greater idea of what it is like to study abroad and the lifelong experiences that come out of such an opportunity. We caught up with Kabevu, the senior advisor to Abroad 101, to learn the importance of the program and what comes out of studying abroad. Well, in this case, students have uh, multiple benefits for study abroad, so everyone kind of takes away what they want to out of a study abroad experience. Um, aside from, you know, increasing their cultural awareness, a lot of our students are able to use, or at least at least build on some of their lifelong learning skills, such as you know how to work with people who have different beliefs um, than you. A lot of our students are language majors, and so for them, they utilize the study abroad experience uh, to increase their immersion experience in a foreign language as well. Choices of places that UWL offers to studying abroad is phenomenal. There are plenty of places students can choose from, such as the Dominican Republic, Egypt, Frankfurt, Germany, and London, England. Senior Bianca Dooley discusses the benefits of studying abroad. 
Um, you get to meet a lot of people. You make connections both in your professional and personal life, which will come in handy when you're looking for internships abroad and things like that. For Colin Malliott, Whitney Storvik, I'm Greg Hill, WMCM News. And now here's Jordan Rayther to tell us about upcoming campus events. Thank you, Haley. Uh, yes, I'm Jordan Rayther. Baracho's Burrito is a Mexican grill that serves fresh food who agreed to graciously host an RIQ radio fundraiser. Head over to Baracho's in Onalaska and 20% of whatever you order will be donated to RIQ radio, the UW Lacrosse student run radio station. Make sure to mention you are supporting RIQ so they can get the donation. This fundraiser will take place all day. The location of Baracho's Burrito is 9432 State Road 16, Onalaska. Personally, my favorite is their Tex-Mex cheesesteak burrito, but you don't have to take my word for it. This year we have seen a meteor shower, a lunar eclipse, Mars, and much more. If these once in a blue moon celestial objects fascinate you, listen up. The UWL Planetarium presents Album Encounters, which is a multimedia light and laser show set to rock music. You might wonder what this music, what music this light show will feature. The right answer is Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. The light show will be presented from 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock in the evening, this Friday, October 30th. Admission is $5 for everyone. This event will take place in room 20 in the basement of Cowley Hall. If you are seeking any more information, you can reach out to Bob Allen at 608-785-8669. With Halloween around the corner, what is scarier than failing a class? I don't know, life after college? The last day to withdraw from classes without receiving an incomplete is Monday, November 2nd. To do so, you need to get your instructor or advisor's signature to drop. Drop and add forms can be picked up in the records and registrations room, 117 Graff Main Hall. Thank you. Back to you, Haley. Tonight from 7 to 8.30 in the evening, there will be an interactive session with the Lost Voices. The Lost Voices are a group of 10 young people who came together after the teenager Mike Brown was shot and killed by Darren Wilson in August of 2014. This group of people refused to be silent and slept outside in tents every night for months and marched every night at 7 p.m. Along with the efforts of other local community members, the Lost Voices helped build a movement that eventually went beyond Ferguson. In this session, they will share their experiences, address media portrayal and their local reality, and discuss why language matters. They will also express the transformation effect of their experiences, their personal development as young leaders, and how they have since given back to their local community in various ways that transcend the initial protest. This will be held in Valhalla Cartwright Center. For more information, contact Thomas Harris at tharris at uwlax.edu or 608-780-7151. The Cooley Region Humane Society has many pets in need of loving homes. Here are some of the animals available in this week's edition of Perfect Pets. My name is Josie. I love being scratched underneath my neck and getting loved. I need a home. Hi, I'm Casanova. I'm practically fearless in the way that I'm not afraid to say hello. My name's Tyson. Be careful when you pet me. I'll start licking and giving you a little love nibble. I'm Autumn. I'm only eight months old, but they say I'm the sweetest and most snuggly girl ever. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Again, the number for the Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014. Heart racing and adrenaline pumping. These are the kinds of feelings that many people may begin to embrace in the month of November at the Recreational Eagle Center. The second annual Indoor Ironman event begins November 1st and will run through November 30th. It is being or orchestrated by the UW Lacrosse Triathlon Club. The Indoor Ironman competition consists of three separate categories, a 2.4 mile swim, a 112 mile bike ride, and a 26.2 mile run. Together these events make a total of 140.6 miles of physical activity. The event itself lasts the entire month and allows everyone who participates to keep track of their miles on a spreadsheet located in the rec just outside of the Strength Center. Though there are no specific prizes given to them in regards to completing the Indoor Ironman, 
Anyone who signs up to participate will be put into a raffle for various gift cards from the Gland Bluff Running Company, which is located on Main Street in downtown La Crosse. Any student or faculty member is free to register for the event at any time this month. In this week's segment of Exploring La Crosse, WMCM's Ashley and Scout went out to explore the Hitting Trails corn maze in West Salem. Here they are with more of the story. This week, Scout and I are down at Hitting Trails corn maze located in West Salem. I'm super excited to be here, Scout. Fall just happens to be like my favorite season, and I hear they have a bunch of different activities here. So many activities. There's mini golf, pumpkin bowling, pumpkin painting, wagon rides, animals, and corn mazes. Oh my god, that sounds like so much fun. Let's go get lost in a maze. Hidden Trails has been open since 1998, and each year their mazes are creatively designed and cut. In the past, the maze has featured dinosaurs, Transformers, Spider-Man, and many others. But this year, the maze features Bucky Badger. But let's not forget, the Hidden Trails offers much more than mazes. They also sell squash, pumpkins, gourds, and flowers. Not only that, but they also have mini golf, animals, pumpkin patches, and pumpkin painting. Oh my God, Scott, I had so much fun there. <laughs> I know, me too. We almost didn't make it out of the corn maze. I know, I can't wait to get lost again next year. I know, it's going to be so much fun. Jacob Heggy, UWL alum, recently got a first place finish in Superior, Wisconsin after completing an ultra marathon, which is a 100 mile long race. He completed this in 19 hours and 30 minutes of constant running. Fellow UWL alum Michael Boris followed close behind him, earning a second place title. Heggy said, there's no way to truly get in shape for a 100 miler. It's all in your head. The two of them refer to themselves as the lacrosse boys and have been earning top finishes in these ultra marathon races that go farther than the 26.2 mile marathon. Together, with the help of Tyler Hines, the owner of Grand Bluff Running, they have organized an ultra marathon through the trails of lacrosse. Picks and 50 is set for November 1st. The 25K and 50K races will take runners through those same trails that have helped Heggy and Borst make a name in the ultramarathon community. Each week, the WMCM crew goes out and talks to your fellow peers in a segment we call Campus Insight. This week, they ask students what their favorite Halloween candy is. Halloween candy? I love the Reese's Pieces, and I could probably eat a whole bag of them. Those little pumpkins that are like... Uh... Uh, candy corn, the candy corn pumpkins, oh, yeah. those are like my absolute favorite. I literally eat an entire thing of those every single year. What's your favorite Halloween candy? Twix. So what is your favorite Halloween candy? Snickers for sure. Reese's. And what is your favorite Halloween candy? Um, Butterfingers, I think. What is your favorite Halloween candy? Reese's peanut butter cup. Uh, I love Snickers, um, although if we're talking specific Halloween candy, I would have to say candy corn. What is your favorite Halloween candy? Um, I like Reese's peanut butter cups. Um, I like candy corn. So what's your favorite Halloween candy? Twix. Okay, well there you have it. Sounds like Reese's is a very popular candy on campus. This has been Tessa Tealot, Scout Mayor, reporting for WMCM News. Back to you guys. Look for the WMCM crew around campus for a chance to have your opinions heard on next week's Campus Insight. And now here's Amber Meyer with her view of the movie Jurassic World. Thanks, Travis. Today I'm going to be reviewing the newest movie in the Jurassic series, Jurassic World. Released on June 12, 2015, the fourth installment of the Jurassic Park series promised to be a smashing box office hit. With the, Jurassic, with the title Jurassic World, we seem to be entering a bigger, maybe even better era of dinosaur-driven movies. Starring Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, there looked to be a lot of potential. The movie focused on the renewed dinosaur theme park and their new genetically mod modified beasts that had capabilities beyond what the park's own scientists knew of. When the dinosaur escaped during lead scientist's family visit, the movie relied on a beefed up Chris Pratt and a dolled up high heel clad Bryce Howard to save the day. Let's take a look. Okay, folks, she's a little shy, so give her a hand when she comes out. I 
Eyes on me. Good. We have a new attraction. Think it'll scare the kids? This will give the parents nightmares. He just went and made a new dinosaur? Probably not a good idea. It's killing for sport. You got 20,000 people with nowhere to go. We're going after it with everything we got. We're safe in here, right? While the... While the trailer looks action-packed and full of teethy dinosaurs, that is about all the movie amounted to. Lacking any real storyline, Jurassic World was nothing but all bite. The screenwriters set up the script to have a potentially decent story at several points, but instead they let the story arc fall flat and left it unfinished. We learn close to nothing about even the main characters in this movie, giving viewers nothing to hold on to. The one character who had good potential was the millionaire who owned the park, and he was killed off in a disappointingly lazy plane crash. The only reason I endured this movie was thanks to Chris Pratt looking better than I've ever seen before. One other thing I greatly appreciated was all the references back to the original Jurassic Park. One of the techies is shown wearing an original Jurassic Park t-shirt, the original gates are used, and they even find safe haven in the abandoned laboratory where they also end up driving the original park trucks. And Bryce Dallas Howard pulls off a very Sam Neill-esque move when she guides the T-Rex out of holding with the flare. Overall, Jurassic World was full of action and terrific CGI's, but nothing to actually follow. How it is the world's top third grossing movie still baffles me almost as much as Bryce Dallas Howard running and heals the entire movie. In comparison to the original, it lacks too much in substance to remain an all-time classic like its predecessor. Hopefully the sequel will have more in store, but rumor has it that we have to wait until 2018 to catch that one. Thanks for catching up with us on this week's movie review, and be sure to stay tuned for upcoming weather. Eagle fans, WMCM-TV has a brand new sports show. That's right. Join us every Monday and Friday to keep up to date with all the Eagle athletics. We'll recap highlights, talk to coaches and players, and keep you up to date on what's happening around campus. Pretty cool, right? The show that I'm talking about is Eagle Nation. So join the crew every Monday and Friday at 12 p.m. to talk about UWL athletics. When you think of sports, think of us, Eagle Nation, on WMCM TV. Oh, hi, my name is Gao Yang, and I have this week's weather. Tonight, um, our weather is going to be 39 degrees. It's going to be cloudy tonight. Our winds are 12 miles per hour. And for Friday, our weather is supposed to be partly cloudy, and we have um, a degree, oh, 53 degrees. It's supposed to be winds of 9 miles per hour. And for Saturday, it looks like we're supposed to have rain for 55 degrees. Um, our wind is supposed to be 10 miles per hour. And Sunday is looking like it should be mostly sunny. Uh, 64 degrees is our high. And our winds are going to be southwest with 7 miles per hour. And now here's this week's interview. Hi, I'm Today I'm joined here by Haley Granko and Kaylee Ekstrom from the Sports Management Association. They are both sports management majors and juniors here at UWL, and they're also co-presidents of the association. So, what is the Sports Management Association? Yeah, so the Sport Management Association is a student-run organization, and we are focused on getting um, people into the sports world and into their career of what they want to do, um, focusing on volunteering opportunities and just playing sports. Very fun, very fun. So, I mentioned you guys are presidents of the organization. What do you guys do as presidents? Um, I work primarily with external engagement, and so I deal with um, departments around campus and then local organizations more like um, from a broad picture, whereas Kaylee here. Yeah, I focus on student engagement, so I'm just trying to get students involved as much as possible with things that they want to do. So what do you do to help get people into the organization? Like what sorts of marketing strategies do you use? Yeah, so we're on all social media outlets, and we actually are on Periscope as well, if you ever Ooh. heard of that. And so you can follow us at, at UWL underscore SMA. Um, but we're just gauging students' interests and seeing what they're interested in in terms of whether it's like marketing strategies or just being more involved in the sports here on campus. Very fun. Do you guys have a pretty good turnout, would you say? Um, yeah, it's okay. So far. <laughs> we have around 60. We have a 
around 100 members, but okay. usually around 40 okay. to 60 actually um, come to the meetings. Yes. Yeah. So. Right, so pretty decent turnout. Very yeah. cool. So what are some of the goals you guys have uh, for the organization here on campus? Uh, we definitely want to uh, get involved more because um, really only sport management majors know about us and we're not exclusive to sport management majors and so we're trying to reach out to more departments um, and areas on campus besides um, okay. sport management. So speaking of getting involved, I, I hear you guys have a pretty exciting event coming up. What is that and what is it going to look like? Yes, we are doing a lip sync and karaoke battle. Um, it's 7 p.m. Thursday, November 5th. That's when the doors open and then the show actually starts at 7.30. Okay. It's five dollars to go and then um, you can also perform. Kayla, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so it's in Valhalla and Cartwright and so we are opening registration still for people to come volunteer and um, spend, some, spend the night with us showing their talents and so they can perform any song that they want and we'll have three judges that will then judge them on different criteria and crowd engagement and okay. lyric clarity and stuff like that. Um, so there's a hundred dollar cash prize for the, win for the wow. winner. Um, so we are hoping that we're going to have a huge turnout and just have a lot of fun um, singing songs and, and being, being involved with other people around campus. Very cool. So even I could perform if I wanted to. Yes. Yeah, I right now. I have a stunning rendition <laughs> of Every Time We Touch by Cascada. It's a yeah, crowd favorite. For sure. Um, so speaking of that event, we've mentioned a lot of, about Sports Management Association, but what is sports management for those people that do not know? Yeah, yeah that's a tricky question. The way I like to explain it is that it's everything else besides the actual event that you see when you go to a sporting event. Um, so there are players and there are coaches that are doing their job, um, but there's so many different things in the sporting world that people can go into. And I personally like to go into like marketing or team development. Um, I am kind of interested in team travel and event coordination, um, but there's also like you do accounting and finance, like you do anything that you can get a normal major for, like an accounting major, but then you can tailor it to sports specifically. Okay, very cool. So Now, since you guys are both sports management majors, why did you guys specifically choose this major? Because I know I want to work in sports, yeah. so I yeah. figured it would just help if I already, um, the classes I'm taking are relevant to sports. Mm -hmm. And then okay. I also have a business minor, so I'm still getting um, more business classes, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. What about you, Kaylee? Uh, I just like the sporting world, and I like everything that it has to offer. And so just being a sport management major, you have to do different job shadows and stuff like that. So I've had the opportunity to job shadow with the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves and the Minnesota Vikings. That's exciting. So it's just fun to see everything that I grew up with and see how different things happen um, besides the actual action of the field. I'm super interested in those internships you mentioned. What kind of things did you do for those organizations? Yeah, so I just job shadowed uh, for a day, and I just got to see what a public relations assistant does and then what a marketing associate does with the Vikings. And so I was just kind of the shadow in the background, uh, sitting through different meetings and uh, getting to meet different players and things like that. That's very exciting. I'm very envious of that. <laughs> um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but Haley is a member of the UW UWL tracks team, um, UWL's track team, I should say. Does the Sports Management Association work with any of UWL's varsity sports? Yeah, a little bit. A lot with volunteering, mostly. Okay. Um, we try, one thing to get in the sport management program is you have to have a resume and you need volunteer experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we recommend a lot of volunteer opportunities, like with the athletic department. So like volunteering at games and other events like that? Yeah, like yeah. simple stuff. Like when I was a freshman, I um, did the backup timers for the swim and dive. And then I also help with scoring for the gymnastics team. So there's little stuff like that that we get out to people. Okay. So for all those prospective sports management majors out there, what would you say would be your number one tip to help them get into the program and to succeed in the program? To get involved yeah. and really just figure out what your interests are and just ask. Ask questions to get involved. And um, I mean, if you reach out to a person and they can't really help you, they can definitely rely you to somebody else who can get you where you want to be. Instant, just different things like that. Very cool. I would agree with that. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and then uh, one more time, uh, next Thursday, November 5th at 7 p.m. in Valhalla, the doors open for the lip sync and karaoke. Will you guys be performing? No, I'm actually <laughs> running not. music. Okay. So I'll be up in right. this like, sound booth. Well, I'm very interested in that, so I might be there. I hope to see you guys there. Thanks again, yes. Haley and Kaylee. Thank you. Thanks.
My name is Josie. I love being scratched underneath my neck and getting loved. I need a home. Hi, I'm Casanova. I'm practically fearless in the way that I'm not afraid to say hello. My name's Tyson. Be careful when you pet me. I'll start licking and giving you a little love nibble. I'm Autumn. I'm only eight months old, but they say I'm the sweetest and most snuggly girl ever. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Again, the phone number for the Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014. Last Saturday was a special day for UW Lacrosse as they hosted their 47th annual Shrine Game. And let's take a look at what happened between Lacrosse and Eau Claire. We start our action three plays into the first quarter, where sophomore quarterback John Tackett throws a touchdown to junior Sam Zweig from Watertown. Eagles were up seven nothing. Next offensive series, John Tackett throws one up wide open to Joel Oxton, and the Eagles lead 14 nothing. Next offensive series, now that it's 14 to seven. Tackett finds Joel Oxen again to make it 21 to 7. We'll fast forward to the second half and Eau Claire is back in this one, 21 to 16. And it was a windy day and Eau Claire elected a squib kick and Mike Santucci, the WIAC Player of the Week, takes it to the house and he could go all the way. Eagles lead 27 to 16. That score at the time to, appeared to be enough to fend off the Blue Golds, but wait, there was a missed field goal to make it 27 to 25, and that was what would it take to make the Eagles survive. Lacrosse advances to three and four on the air and two and two in the WIAC. The Eagles will travel to Stevens Point to face the Pointers on Halloween. Last night, four seniors played their last regular season home game for the volleyball team with Lacrosse and. Whitewater and Oshkosh were deadlocked in first place. The Eagles and the Warhawks took it to Mitchell Hall for a right to take over first place in the WIAC. Lacrosse took advantage in the first set and then commanded the Warhawks to go up to one to nothing. The second set was a fight, tied 22 all, but Stephanie Hank, the sophomore, took matters into her own hands and the Eagles prevailed to go up two to nothing. The Warhawks could not muster a comeback and Lacrosse soared in their third set to win three nothing. Leah Putzier led the Eagles with 14 kills and credited the team chemistry for the win. And also head coach Lily Hallock quoted, This team has potential to do great things, and this proves to be the outside world what this team is capable of. The Eagles now in first place control their own destiny and can clinch a WIAC title at Platteville tomorrow night. Moving on to the soccer pitch, the women's soccer team with a win would clinch a share of the WIAC title. Facing the Stevens Point Pointers on a cold Wednesday night, Stevens Point got on the board first, one to nothing Pointers. But the Eagles fire back a firecracker to make it one to one from the freshman Alex Cording. Natalie Herzog also tallied on a goal with an equalizer to make it two to two. And we go to overtime, and Stevens Point Courtney Alcock scores an amazing goal to stun the Eagles for their first WIAC loss, and it sets up a winner-take-all matchup between Oshkosh and Lacrosse. That one will be at Saturday at the Veterans Memorial Field Sports Complex. Well, some really exciting things going on for UWL Athletics. Truly a good time to be an Eagle. Yes, it is indeed. So Halloween this weekend, what is your guys' plans? Well, my mom worked at a World's Fair, and she worked for a NASA booth, so I have astronaut suits. I am stoked. Joey? I might make my way to Madison and uh, see the Badgers play on Saturday, uh, get a little Freak Fest action going on. Okay. Oh, definitely. That will be fun. Hopefully the weather stays nice. We might get some rain, which would not be a great for this Halloween. Where are you going to be? Oh, me? I'm going to be Wayne from Wayne's World, so that will be a pretty cool outfit, I think. So. You also, know the college sweatshirt? I always wear that every year. I might be a John Belushi for, for Halloween. Yeah, you should. Bring that out in Madison for Freak Fest. Thanks for watching WMCM's Week in Review. Make sure to join us next week, Thursday, right here on Campus Channel 96 and Digital Channel 989.